Hello there, you awesome people of the internet. I'm Stefan, the all-in nerd. And this is my tutorial, airbrushing for beginners. I'm gonna go through some basics, some equipment, some tricks, and some do's and don'ts when using your airbrush. So, come on, it'll be fun, I promise. Let's get started. Oh yeah, if you like this video and this kind of content, tap a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. It's totally free. First off, the airbrush. When you first look at an airbrush, it can look a bit complicated, but it's actually quite simple. But there's a few different kinds of airbrushes out there, like this one for example, with a cup on the side, but this one is a bit more complicated. And you have the siphon fed one, with a cup underneath that it sucks paint from. But I'll be talking about the most popular one when it comes to hobbyists, which is the dual action gravity fed one. And the dual action refers to the trigger, which controls both the flow of air and the amount of paint that you let through the nozzle. And gravity fed means that the gravity is the force that helps the paint go down into the airbrush when you're pressing the trigger. Here's a quick disassembly of it. Just using the airbrush is quite simple, but being really good at it takes a lot of practice. And I am by no means great at airbrushing, but I'm using it a lot and I'm getting better and better all the time. The gravity fed airbrush has the cup in the top and will the will of your lord and savior oh, Lord Jesus. paint will come through through the nozzle. It is possible to control the amount of air coming through just by pressing the trigger down a little bit. But I do suggest that if you want less air, you should lower the PSI on your compressor instead. So you can keep the trigger fully down and just focus on the paint coming through the nozzle. Oh yeah, that's my compressor by the way. It's a cheap one with a built-in tank. And having a built-in tank means that the compressor won't start running every time you press the trigger. Which is less noisy. Back to the airbrush. Depending on what you're going to use the airbrush for, you need to decide on what size of needle you need. A small needle is good for painting small parts of a model, and when you don't want to accidentally drench the whole piece in paint. And a bigger needle is great for priming and base coating your models. 0.2 and 0.4mm are standard sizes. And if you're a beginner and are about to buy one, I recommend the 0.4 to start with, unless you're getting several sizes with your airbrush. The needle itself is really fragile, and you need to be careful handling it. If the tip just gets a little bit bent, you'll start having problems. I learned that the hard way. This is why we can't have nice things. And here I have a professional animation showing just how the mechanics of the airbrush works. So when I press the trigger, air starts to come out. And when I slowly tilt it backwards, paint starts to go through and mixes with the air and shoots right out of the nozzle. The further back you tilt the trigger, the more paint you're letting through. When I was about to get my first airbrush, I decided to buy a cheap one out from Amazon because I'm really good at breaking things. Hey yo, everybody. <laughs> but if you feel like you have some extra money to spend, don't be afraid to get one a bit more expensive. If you're anything like me, you're probably gonna upgrade soon anyway. And that simply explained how an airbrush works. But what about when you're using real paint instead of animated one? Well, there I don't have a simple answer for you. All paints are different. Some airbrush paints work great from the bottle, while other needs to be thinned down more thoroughly. But most water-based acrylic paints can be used as long as they're thinned down properly. And those are the only kind of paints I use for my airbrush. I'm not gonna go through all of the different paints, but I'll show you how to thin down the regular Citadel ones. The mixing ratio between paint and thinner that I'm using, if it's a thick paint, is 50-50. If it gets too wet, I'll add more paint, and if it's still too thick, I'll add more thinner. When mixing your paint, you can either do it in a container on the side or straight in the cup of the airbrush. Doing it on the side takes a bit more time, but it's easier to see the consistency of the paint. A downside to this is that you'll have to use a bit more paint because some paint will get stuck on the walls of the container that you're using. The other way to do it is to mix it straight in the cup. It's really important that you start by putting in the thinner in the bottom, so you don't get a lot of unthinned paint down around your needle. And mix it up with an old brush. But be careful not to damage the needle with the ferrule of the brush. After mixing it, pinch the nozzle and give it a gentle blow to mix it up even more. This is actually a really quick way to mix if you know what you're doing. But the downside with this technique is that dried or clogged paint can get into the cup and that will probably clog up the needle straight away. I heard that the consistency of the paint has been described as skimmed milk. There's only one thing I hate more than lying. Skim milk. And for me that would have to mean low fat milk, because I had a lot of problems in the beginning with paint not being thinned down enough. And now we have some thinned down paint in the airbrush. Make sure you have the PSI set to the correct amount on your compressor. 
I prefer around 30 psi for priming and base coating and around 15 to 20 psi for something more subtle. Time to spray and pray. If you're new to airbrushing or just want to practice, I recommend to do some exercises, like spraying thin lines and dots. Trying to keep them small and tight and then eventually go bigger and bigger. Having your airbrush close to the surface will paint small and tidy, while holding it a bit away will paint wider and less dense. Heads up! Important tip coming up. When you're gonna stop spraying paint, you shouldn't just simply let go of the trigger fully. It'll turn your airbrush into a splurge can on the next time you press the trigger. To prevent that, you should keep the trigger down for airflow the whole time and not letting the trigger go until you stop spraying paint. That way you won't get paint stuck in the nozzle. I hope you guys enjoy this content and if you do, please give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And while you're at it, slap that subscribe button. Let's get back to the video. Starting out with priming and base coating your models will teach you a lot about airbrushing. And when doing layers with thin down paint, it's important to let the paint dry in between the coats. If you want, you can use the airbrush to help you dry faster just by blowing air on the paint. But even if you do everything right, you'll end up with paint drying on the tip of the needle, also known as dry tip, and that will eventually stop the paint from coming through. An easy fix to this is to have some airbrush cleaner close to hand and a brush to brush it off with, and this will happen quite often. Airbrush cleaner is great, you'll be using a lot of it, so I'll recommend that you make your own. Check out my other tutorial how to make it, it's really cheap and it's really simple. Just do what he says, nobody needs to get hurt. Let's check out some equipment. If you're just starting out, you can buy one of these complete sets with an airbrush, compressor, hose and everything. You'll probably exchange your airbrush in the future, but hopefully not the compressor, so get one that you'll be happy with. I use this airbrush booth with a built-in ventilation system. You can get it without or with the hose for hanging it, hanging it out through a window or so. You can also just make a small booth with a cardboard box if you don't have anything against getting some paint dust over your hobby area. But then you'd have to wear a protective mask so you don't get the paint dust in your lungs. Share a little bit probably won't hurt, but if you're gonna spray a lot then I highly recommend it. For mixing the paint on the side I'm using these small mixing plates that are really handy. Masking tape. A great tool if you need to cover up some parts of your model. Some other extra equipment I would recommend is lubrication or oil for greasing in that needle and other moving parts so the airbrush will last longer. A water bottle with a long nozzle for an easy way of cleaning the airbrush both in between the paints and a deeper clean after you're done. And it's perfect for having your homemade airbrush cleaner in it. I can recommend the thinner from Vallejo. Sure you can make your own thinner but I would recommend some proper stuff when it comes to thinning your paints. Quick connections. For a fast way of taking off the airbrush from the hose can be a good thing to get if your airbrush doesn't include one. Some people like this container for emptying the excess of the cup by flushing it all through the nozzle. I'm not a big fan though, because you can't really see if the liquid you're spraying through is clean or not. Kind of similar when you wipe in the bathroom. I'll wipe and I'll wipe and I'll wipe still poop. I've gotten most of my things from Amazon and there are still a few more pieces of equipment that I use. But I use those mainly for cleaning, which I'll be covering in my other tutorial. Be sure to check it out. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that I taught you something. If you have any questions or just you don't like my beard, leave a comment below. Until next time.